on how safe Hooked this is. Hooked up and everything. We drove into their compound around the propane tanks. <laughs> and we pulled up on the side and uh, we took on, what, 30, 40 gallons of propane. Totally safe. <laughs> we started in Florida, crossed the border in Mexicali, and are now heading down to the very bottom of Baja, Mexico. We're checking out the beaches, the culture, and learning what makes Baja so special. <laughs> With this challenging terrain in Baja, it would have been real nice to have a set of snap pads. We do have some now, and they make a huge difference for places like right here where we're on very uneven terrain. It gives us a larger footprint, and in our case, the prime snap pads are over three times larger than the original jack size. Consider these your RV's flip-flops from Mexico, or basically anywhere you wouldn't want to walk barefoot, that's where you need these snap pads. Um, but they're also eco-friendly, they're made out of Recycle tires, which is awesome, but that way you can just set it and forget it. Check out this link right over here if you want to know more about the snap pads that we have on our RV as well as the snap pads that might fit your RV. We also have a ton of other great resources to jumpstart your trip. Yeah, things like downloads, checklists, discounts, promo codes, everything that will save you a ton of money. So with our RV park right next to Bahia Conception, we couldn't ignore this amazingly large island what, maybe a quarter, half mile offshore? Yeah, it was, it was very close. Tons of birds and marine life, and I thought, hey, I've got this spear fishing gun, the spear gun, maybe there's some big fish over there. So I got my kayak out, got all my gear together. If you haven't seen the prior videos, make sure to check those out, and you'll know I'm not really like a, a super high level pro. I'm, I'm kind of a semi-pro spear fisherman, but not a high level pro. What would you say? Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> but anyways, part of learning, part of getting good is to just keep doing things until you get better. And uh, this is more of a spearfishing fail, but I got all my gear out there, went out to this island. The island is covered, or the, had this perimeter of seaweed, about a five to 10 foot thick uh, pileup of seaweed all around the island. And there weren't very many spots to beach the kayak at. I didn't want to let the kayak float away, it was windy. So I had to get the kayak up onto the beach and then get my, 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 my fins on and all my gear on to go try and see if there's any big fish to spear and eat for dinner. And so it's kind of this, this big process. And so I had to kind of like, on all fours, crawl through the seaweed over these rocks and then finally got out to the, to the water. There's not a single other person around. What if there are some big fish here? And that could be big sharks too. So I started kind of like, you know, thinking like- Sketching yourself out. Getting sketched out. And the, the, the visibility wasn't very good. And uh, so I, I spent probably a half hour looking around for fish. After about a half hour of farting around trying to like, find some clear water and get the cojones up to go further out into the deeper water, uh, I didn't see very many fish and I just kind of scrapped it and decided to make it more of a little kayak excursion instead. Mm. I prefer to keep my cojones where they are. I feel no need to seek out big fish with pointy teeth. <laughs> so I made sure I just took out my paddle board where I stay above water. I don't tend to fall in. And it was like the perfect place to paddle board if you, or a kayak. What do you think about the birds on the island? There's so many. It, 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 we 
we called it bird shit island because there were so many birds and it was just covered in poop. <laughs> It was a white island. Yeah, yeah, it was. Like, a, like it, was, it was just one rock, one big rock. Basically, it was the whole island. Yeah. All white. Kind of neat, though. I think they call them a rookery. Essentially, it's an island where just birds can get to. It's a safe refuge for birds to have their babies and offspring. Yeah, yeah, birds and this guy. <laughs> Did you go around the island as well on your paddleboard? No, I didn't go that deep. I stayed closer to shore, but I did find a little private beach. That was ah, cool. Oh, cool. So if you have any paddle boards, surfboards, kayaks, or even just some snorkel gear. A lot of cool things mm -hmm. to do right there off the coast or off the shoreline there at Bikini Conception. Pretty cool stuff. I don't want to spoil anything because we have a really cool treat in a future video when we go back to Bikini Conception, but just know that there are some large animals that do get to Bikini Conception around April or May. And if you find yourself there, it's not the best time weather-wise, but there's some incredible opportunities. So stick around later in the series, you're gonna see what we come across mm -hmm. when we go back to Behe Conception. But either way, both times we were there, we had a great time. So leaving Behe Conception, it was tough. We didn't know, the next spot that we were headed towards, we didn't know exactly what it was going to look like or be like. Um, so leaving this little pristine beach, that was rough. It, I was not excited to leave. Yeah, because we're going, <laughs> we're forging off into the unknown and a lot of times the unknown sucks. There's not oh, always the conception. Elsa singing into the unknown and we're also wondering where our friends Fabian and Isabella were at. Mm. Uh, living at 4 by 4 our friends from back in Gonzaga Bay and San Felipe, we had made plans to rendezvous at some point south. After leaving Gonzaga Bay though, we just did, it, it was radio silence. We hadn't heard anything, so we didn't know if they were okay or if they were traveling and maybe they'd already passed us. So we thought, well, hey, we'll keep our eyes open as we head south and see if we can see their rig on the beach somewhere. Yeah, their rig is pretty distinguishable, so we were pretty confident we'd be able to see them if they were there. So we got headed south, there was another military checkpoint. This one was very simple, they waved us through, but we saw that on northbound traffic they were being much more uh, thorough. Oh, yeah, there was a line of traffic waiting to get through that checkpoint. So we kind of thought, hey, we might budget some more time heading north, but for us heading south, it was a breeze. We kept on cruising along, and we got to the big town of Loretta, which is a really nice, big, cool, coastal town there. Mm -hmm. So we were able to kind of connect with the world, let our families know we're still alive. Yeah. Unfortunately, nothing. Actually, no. We did get something from Fabian and Isabella, but they were still up in San Ignacio. Okay. So we had far, far surpassed them, and we were like, "All right, leave it to fate. We'll see you guys when we see you guys." <laughs> That's right. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, we found out there that they were well behind us. We had. Uh, us, we wanted to get to the Pacific Coast before the swell arrived. So we decided to keep on trucking. We also were getting low on our propane and just south of Loretta was this massive uh, propane facility. <laughs> and we were able to drive the RV, uh, I don't know how safe Hooked this is, but and we, we <laughs> drove the truck being towed into their compound around the, around the propane tanks. <laughs> And we pulled up on the side and uh, we took on, what, 30, 40 gallons of propane. Totally safe. <laughs> for those of you that might need to get propane for your RVs, it was a very simple process. They had all the parts and tools they needed to connect mm -hmm. to our tanks. We pulled up there, we just asked them to fill it up, and uh, it was, I think, I think it was maybe a couple dollars a gallon. Uh, I'm sure it was a different rate because it's in you know, liters and, and pesos, but uh, it wasn't much more money than it would be in the States. So it was very affordable. Muchas gracias. Adios. And uh, yeah, it was very easy. We drove in. We didn't have to unhook. We just drove through, got propane. Yep. Half hour later, we pulled back on the, on the highway and we headed on south. And south of Loretto, the highway veers back across Baja, back towards the west coast, 
and you go through the mountains again. Mm -hmm. But these mountains though are very, very, I thought very beautiful. Mm -hmm. All of the mountains are beautiful, but this is kind of cool. These have a, had a lot more cacti and this more greenery on them. Yeah. And uh, again, some windy mountain roads, but it's very scenic, very pretty. And for us, we took our just took our time. We drove safe and slow, and it was a pleasurable. Yeah, we experience. we pulled over a couple times. I remember, so you could drone, and Nutmeg could run around. Yeah, we did pull off. There was some a cool spot. We found a nice big turn off. It was just, yeah, it was a nice drive. Yeah, yeah. Nice drive. <laughs> You can find some of our earlier Baja videos over here. The next video in this series is right here. You can find out more information on our website as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.